गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन स्टार्ट विथ क्लास नंबर लेवन ऑन स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ मेटेरियल सो इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैव सीन द थ्री कॉन्स्टेंट्स फॉर द थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ लोडिंग वन इज गिवन बाय इफ देर इज ए टेंजाइल और कॉम्प्रेसिव लोड वी नो दैट यंग्स मॉडुलस और मॉडुलस ऑफ इलास्टिसिटी इज इक्वल टू नॉर्मल स्ट्रेस बाय नॉर्मल स्ट्रेन एंड if there is a body is subjected to shear force then if the body is shearing then that constant is known as modulus of rigidity or shear modulus is equal to shear stress by shear strain if the body is subjected to hydrostatic pressure causing volumetric strain that constant is known as uh, bulk modulus and that is equal to hydrostatic pressure p divided by volumetric strain okay now what i will do is i will derive one equation relating e and g then another equation relating e and k then another e equation which is which will relate all the three okay so three derivations i will do in this class so first what i will do is i will consider first one relationship between yang's modulus e and shear modulus g so here what i will do is i'll consider first one body this is okay so this is a b c and d now this body is subjected to shear on this pore on this face shear stress tau is acting on this face another shear stress and on this face opposite to this one tau here on opposite face will be opposite shear tau is acting now because of this shear stress acting on all the four faces there will be small deformation okay that small deformation is represented by this dotted line so here initially diagonal bd okay this is the original size of diagonal bd so after deformation let's say there is a small deformation b will move to the new point e okay and this is a ab will deform by a length of ae and the angle of deformation or the shear strain is given by phi okay now let's say the length of ab bc cd each face is having equal length it is a square it is a a and a all the four faces have same length okay next so this diagonal bd is deformed to de so if i drop a perpendicular from point b on this de so this point i call it as f okay so this uh, bd will be equal to fd okay so if we take this right angle triangle here this is diagonal and this is bc length is a this is length is a this is d then this bd will be this will be square root of a square plus a square so you will get bd is equal to a into root 2 so this bd length is a into root 2 so here also bd length will be a into root 2 so here bd is equal to fd equal to a into root 
okay so if we go for cal uh, uh, obtaining the strain or change in length of this diagonal bd so this diagonal bd is ch uh, change in length of this diagonal bd after shear strain will be ef okay so if i write strain in bd here this is 90 degree so this will be 45 degree here bef okay so if i go for strain in this diagonal bd strain in diagonal bd is equal to change in length of bd divided by length of bd change in length of bd will be final minus initial final is de minus uh, initial is bd and bd is equal to fd whole divided by so bd i will write it as a root 2 so this uh, de minus fd i will get it as ef divided by a root 2 okay now i will consider this triangle ebf if i take that triangle so 90 degree is here this is f this is b and this is e and here we have 45 degree okay so if i take cos 45 degree i will get ef by be okay so this ef is equal to be into cos 45 this i write here e into f is equal to be cos 45 degree and ef is equal to be is nothing but this length okay so this length i will write it as and i will take another triangle here b e a okay here there is a small angle phi and here it is 90 degree okay this is 90 degree then uh, this is a this is b and this is e now if i write tan phi equal to it will be be divided by ab so i'll get be equal to ab into tan phi so be is equal to ab length is small a small a into tan phi so for be i will substitute a into tan phi a into tan phi cos 45 is 1 by root 2 okay this value i can substitute for ef when i do that strain in bd is equal to a into tan phi into 1 by root 2 whole divided by a into root 2 is there so this a a gets cancelled okay what remains is strain in bd equal to see this tan phi is there no tan phi i will take it approximately equal to angle phi because phi is very small deformation very small angle so this tan phi becomes phi then whole divided by 1 by root 2 into 1 by root 2 so this becomes 2 okay so now what i am getting is strain in bd is equal to 1 by 2 into phi now what is this phi phi is a shear strain now all of you know shear strain phi is equal to by this formula so this is nothing but this shear strain is nothing but phi so here i can write it as tau by phi also 
So now phi is equal to tau by g. Shear stress divided by shear modulus. So that I will substitute here. Strain in BD is equal to 1 by 2 into shear stress by shear modulus. I call this as equation number 1. This is the shear uh, strain in the diagonal BD. After simplification, I have expressed this it as half of shear strain. Okay. Now what I will do? I will consider again that diagonal. See, all of you know that when I take a body of this kind, if I take this diagonal BD and uh, here A, see this body will be subjected to or this another diagonal here, this is CD. See in case of pure shear, we have seen that this pure shear tau will give rise to axial tensile stress in the diagonal BD. Okay, Along this diagonal BD, there will be one tensile stress. And along this diagonal AC, there will be one compressive stress that we have seen. So this tensile stress along this diagonal on the face AC will be tensile stress equal to tau. On, along this diagonal AC on the face BD, it will be compressive stress equal to tau. Okay. So in this diagonal, now we have considered this diagonal BD. This is undergoing a tensile stress sigma t. So there will be one longitudinal strain because of sigma t and there will be compressive strain because of this sigma c, okay, which is acting perpendicular to that or along the another diagonal. Now, I have to indicate this strain also. If I take that strain, so because of two stresses sigma t equal to sigma c equal to the applied shear stress, the strain in diagonal BD is equal to, there will be one lateral strain and there will be one longitudinal strain. Okay. See, I can express this lateral strain and longitudinal strain in terms of stress because we know uh, Young's modulus E is equal to stress by strain. Okay. Now, strain is equal to sigma by E. If it is longitudinal strain, I can express it as tensile stress divided by Young's modulus. So for longitudinal stress, I will substitute this. Longitudinal strain, I will substitute this value. Okay. Then I want to substitute for lateral strain. Okay. See now, this diagonal BD is subjected to tensile stress that will give rise to lateral strain, uh, longitudinal strain. Okay. Now this compressive stress, compressive load on the diagonal BD, when the compressive load is applied, okay, there will be lateral strain I have to consider along BD. Okay. If I consider strain, uh, strain along this length, it becomes longitudinal strain due to compressive stress and lateral strain due to compressive stress will be along BD or perpendicular to AC. So that I can express with the help of Poisson's ratio. Poisson's ratio we know lateral strain divided by longitudinal strain. Okay. Now what we have written here is this is for tensile stress, tensile load. Now what I am writing here is this is for sigma c compressive load. So I want lateral strain due to compressive load, this will be equal to Poisson's ratio into longitudinal strain due to compressive stress. So this becomes lateral strain due to compressive load equal to Poisson's ratio into compressive stress divided by Young's modulus. Now this I will substitute here. 
lateral strain due to compressive load will be mu into sigma c divided by Young's modulus plus longitudinal strain will be sigma t divided by Young's modulus. Okay. See in my notes I have just written this uh, reverse. I have written this equation. After that for lateral strain that equation I have written this side and uh, this is written this side. If I show you my notes which I have already sent you. See this is the notes I have already sent you. Here this lateral strain is written this side. Longitudinal strain is written this side. Okay. Do not confuse while studying lateral strain how this is lateral strain. Okay. Lateral strain comes this side. Longitudinal strain comes this side. Okay. So now just take these uh, values. See here uh, whatever tensile and compressive stress along the diagonal is generated it will be equal to applied shear stress. So here you can write Poisson's ratio into tau by E plus tensile stress is tau divided by E. So I will get strain in BD due to generated uh, tensile and compressive stress. I get shear stress divided by shear strain into 1 plus Poisson's ratio, 1 plus mu. Now I call this as equation number 2. Now I given two equations for strain in diagonal BD. This is one strain, this is one strain. This equation is obtained by considering applied shear stresses. This equation is obtained by considering the internally generated tensile and compressive stresses which are generated along the diagonal. Now I will equate both of these equating 1 and 2 we get so this is 1 by 2 into tau by g equal to tau by e into 1 plus mu so here tau and tau gets cancelled here you will get e equal to 2 times g into 1 plus mu you have to remember this equation. This is the relation between Young's modulus E and shear modulus G. Okay. Or you can write it as G is equal to E divided by 2 into 1 plus mu. This is the formula which will relate the Young's modulus and the shear modulus. Okay. Now I will go for deriving another formula. Relationship between Young's modulus E and bulk modulus K. Okay. Now here when it is bulk modulus the body is subjected to three mutually perpendicular forces or we call that mutually perpendicular see if we apply one force here and another force here and opposite face this force and to this opposite face f here one force and here another force. So on all the six faces equal forces are applied which are perpendicular to each other. Okay. If we take coordinate as x, y and z, this is fx, fy, fz. So forces applied along x, y and z axis are equal and perpendicular. So such force you can take it as hydrostatic pressure. Okay, Hydrostatic force which will be applied equally on all the faces. Now considering the effect of this force effects on the body, see if I draw that small figure, see when this force is applied, 
if i study this body considering only fx see when i consider fx force is acting so this will cause the body to expand along x axis but along y axis it will reduce the length okay so when that expanded v if i draw so that body comes inside that it is not clear i will draw bigger one so if i consider the effect of only x force now for when force is applied along x axis this length will reduce so this or this length will increase first i will take this along this length okay then here al along this length that is along x axis it will increase but along y axis and along z axis it will decrease so x increases and y and z the dimension decreases so if i draw that separately here okay see this is the shape now what i have drawn here no this is only because of x force see when on this face let's say give let's give the name a b c d and this point is e this is f this is g this is h a is moved to a dash b is b dash then uh, c has moved to c dash and uh, d has moved to d dash then uh, e is here e dash f is here f dash g is here g dash h is here h dash now what you have observed is when i consider only fx force acting okay along x axis the length or dimension will increase that means ad is increased to a dash d dash bc is increased to b dash c dash ef is increased to e dash and f dash and gh is increased to g dash and d dash so all the dimensions along x axis that is ad bc ef and hg are increased okay so these are increased dimensions when you go for writing the strain let if you write strain in ab is equal to change in length of ab will be a dash b dash minus ab divided by original length is ab okay similarly because of this force only what happens to this what let's say y axis see along y axis you have ah ah length is reduced to a dash h dash okay in x axis the lengths are increased but in y axis it is reduced you can see be is reduced to b dash e dash c and f is reduced to c dash f dash okay lateral dimensions are compressing similarly along z axis see eh is reduced to e dash and h dash then uh, ab is reduced to a dash and b dash cd is reduced to c dash d dash and the gf is reduced to f dash h dash so if you take strain along y axis let's say i will take be strain in be is equal to change in length by original length again now this will be b dash is b is greater but b dash d dash is smaller this will be change in length divided by original length is be okay now similarly this is for y axis this is for x axis 
and similarly z axis if we take if we so here along x axis here i have taken ab ab is not along x axis no this is z axis so along x axis means it is al ad ab is along z axis okay then be is along y axis if i take x axis means it should be ad now x axis is ad is equal to a dash uh, d dash minus ab uh, ad whole divided by ad so here i have to change ab is along z axis then ab so here it should be original length ab is greater a dash b dash okay now if i write poisson's ratio poisson's ratio is equal to lateral strain divided by longitudinal strain so for lateral strain i can consider either y or z okay i can consider here lateral strain along uh, ab divided by longitudinal strain will be ad here or i can consider lateral strain along be divided by lateral strain along ad okay and uh, yeah see now what is the total strain due to fx only due to the load fx it will be 1 see total strain in the x direction okay due to load fx and fy fz so here fx when i consider it will give me the only longitudinal strain along x axis so that longitudinal strain i can express as strain is equal to force by young's modulus or stress by young's modulus okay now that stress we are expressing it as pressure here pressure divided by young's modulus so this is along x axis so i can express it as this is longitudinal strain and this along again x axis if i consider fy force it will introduce compressive strain or the reduction in length along x axis similar because see here fx force is in, uh, contributing for increase in length along x axis but when i go for strain due to uh, fx force in y and z direction i will take these values similarly in x direction there will be two lateral strains due to force fy and fz so that strain will be compressive now this is increasing strain minus another hydrostatic force along y axis divided by young's modulus into poisson's ratio because i want lateral strain because i will multiply that here poisson's ratio into lateral uh, longitudinal strain minus another longitudinal strain in z direction divided by uh, into poisson's ratio so totally along x axis there will be one longitudinal strain due to fx and there will be two lateral strains due to fy and fz this is only along x axis similarly if i consider y axis i can write this formula again so if i take the common here epsilon x equal to hydrostatic pressure divided by young's modulus into 1 minus 2 times mu similarly for y axis it will be hydrostatic pressure divided by young's modulus into 1 minus 2 mu since we are applying equal force on all we will get same equation okay now volumetric strain equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z now substituting all this here volumetric strain is equal to this will be p by e into 1 minus 2 mu so other three are, other two are also same so i can directly write it as 3 times p by e into 
1 minus 2 mu. Now here volumetric strain is equal to we know bulk bulk modulus bulk modulus k is equal to hydrostatic pressure divided by volumetric strain okay now i can substitute that here so instead of taking this term e i will take here e equal to 3 into let this p by e uh, p by epsilon v into 1 minus 2 mu so here i will substitute E is equal to 3 into bulk modulus K into 1 minus 2 times mu. This is one relation. Okay. See here, writing this equation, understanding this equation is important. Now, for understanding that, you should know that Poisson's ratio is equal to lateral strain by longitudinal strain. For x axis, you write this. Okay. Similarly, for y-axis, I can write this equation again. Now, what I have considered is strain along x-axis. This term is only because of Fx force and this is later, uh, longitudinal. This is due to Fy force and this is lateral. And this lateral strain due to Fy force induced in this body, I have considered by using this formula. Lateral strain is equal to Poisson's ratio into longitudinal strain for y axis. This is for y. Then for longitudinal strain, again f uh, stress by this uh, applied force. Now, stress, whatever we applied now, that is nothing but hydrostatic pressure. Okay. It is same along all the three axes. Now we know this formula, stress, uh, strain is equal to uh, stress by Young's modulus. Now this stress is nothing but this pressure, which is applied pressure. That's why we have taken like this here. So this is for y axis, y force. And similarly, due to Fz force, okay, there will be longitudinal strain along z axis, but along x axis, it will induce lateral strain. That I will consider here. Again, lateral strain along uh, lateral strain due to z here lateral strain due to z force so that will be again longitudinal strain along z axis into poisson's ratio so this term if you understand writing this equation then all this figure you need not have to write in exam this all this figure we are writing only for your understanding okay in exam directly you can go for consider a cube apply the forces then go for writing this equation directly okay but for your understanding you should know this is longitudinal strain along x axis minus y minus because along x axis only there will be compressive stresses okay uh, because of fy and fz force now what figure i have shown this is only for fx when fx force is applied because of this fx force along x axis there will be longitudinal stress or increase in length then along y and z axis there will be reduction in length now along x axis there will be reduction in length due to fy that's what i have written here along z uh, along x axis there will be reduction in length due to fz force that's what i have written here okay this equation you have to understand you have to put your mind a lot here. Okay, if you understood understood that strain, how to write the strain equations and Poisson's ratio, then this equation becomes very easy. Okay, if you simply practice mathematically, you will write these all these steps. But please put your efforts to understand this equation. Next, last equation, which will relate all the three. That is the Young's modulus. relationship between Young's modulus E, shear modulus G and bulk modulus K. Now, we will directly use the formulas which we have derived until now. 
we have derived Young's modulus is equal to 2 times shear modulus into 1 plus Poisson's ratio. Okay. Then we have derived another formula Young's modulus E is equal to 3 into bulk modulus K into 1 minus 2 times mu. Now here either you can equate these two and arrive at the equation or reduce this equation for Poisson's ratio. Poisson's ratio mu will be E by 2 times G minus 1. This mu I will substitute in this equation. E is equal to 3 times K into 1 minus E 2 into E by 2 times G minus 1. So, E is equal to we will get 3 times k 1 minus e e by g and then uh, plus 2. So, this will be e is equal to 3 times k 3 minus e by g. So, this I can uh, further reduce e equal to 9 k minus 3ke 3k by g into e and this e I will take to the other side e plus 3k divided by g into e equal to 9k. So, you take E common one plus three K divided by G equal to nine K. Then I can uh, write it as G plus three times K whole divided by G equal to nine K. 9k by e or I keep this e, e as it is. Next uh, e is equal to 9k into g divided by g plus 3k. You can use this equation or this equation we can write as or from here only we can write so this e I can take um, 9k or see here e I will take this side and k I will take this side when I do that I will get uh, one side it is 9 by e equal to so e is taken this side when when I take k this side I get 1 by k plus 3 by g. So you use an whichever equation you want. This is another relation which will relate Young's modulus E, shear modulus G and uh, bulk modulus K. Okay. There is another term you should know that is See whatever stress sigma that is called as working stress is developed in the body. Okay, this stress should be less than Young's. Uh, this stress should be less than yield stress. Okay, yield stress in tension. Then the body will work under safe region. Correct. If you go beyond working, so if the working stress or the body in which on you are calculating stress if it is more than the yield strength in tension of the material then it will start to fail by yielding okay so if it is uh, brittle material if it is this is for ductile material 
if it is brittle material then for brittle material sigma working if it is greater than ultimate strength in tensile again it will fail by breaking directly so yield strength and the working stress should be less than ultimate stress in brittle material for this to be safe now for this equation and this one how much it should be less it should be less than yield strength in tensile test and uh, uh, it should be less than ultimate strength in brittle material but how much it should be less so that is given by one term so you want safe you want the material to be safe that is known as factor of safety so factor of safety we call it as fos this is equal to how much what is the criteria for failure if it is yield strength divided by working strength so yield strength should be always greater than the working stress or whatever stress is developed in the member it should be less than yield strength so this factor of safety will be always greater than 1 if you take this is equal to 1 factor of safety if it is equal to 1 then exactly you are considering the neck to neck failure or the design what you have done is neck to neck if you take equal so always take less than that if this is for ductile material if it is for brittle material it will be ultimate stress divided by working stress okay so always factor of safety will be greater than 1 if you take equal to 1 it is very risky okay so it should be greater than 1 if it is ductile material you will consider yield strength as the criteria for failure and it should be working stress means the component for which you are designing that stress should be less than yield stress so automatically factor of safety will be greater than 1 if that you will consider yield strength as the criteria if your material is ductile material this is for ductile yield strength if you are considering brittle material then consider ultimate stress finally factor of safety is defined as the safe stress divided by working stress safe stress is yield stress in case of ductile material safe stress is ultimate stress in case of brittle material so this is the last topic if we go through your syllabus so here volumetric strain is completed expression for volumetric strain elastic constants we have derived today you know all these are elastic constant then simple shear shear strain everything is over stress in composite section now statically indeterminate members means that we considered force having a um stepped force and the forces are cons uh, varying forces okay variable forces we are considered at different steps okay now we have derived many formulas in this unit i have covered all the theory okay all the theory all the derivations all the formulas are ready so if the if you go through the notes which i have given you in the end i have given list of formula okay that list of formula in that list of formula you can prepare your own list of formula 